And that's uh, that's a good suggestion for all the things that we're gonna going through. You know, we still got to keep on pushing. And now we have some brothers in the studio. A bunch of brothers, as a matter of fact. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they're all in the studio, and they are going to talk about something exciting that they're doing. They're going to talk about a book. Is this mine? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I keep it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you you always got to give something. Put something out. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm looking at it in a book here. And the title of the book is East Side Story. Um, this is by our very own, and he's a regular here, Anthony Canones, also known as A Class. A Class. Yeah. And so he said the name of the book is East Side Story, Where Dreams Become Nightmares, produced by Kevin Stewart and Malik Burns. And uh, so we're going to let the brothers introduce themselves, go around the table, and introduce yourselves. And then we'll have the central focus because you look like the Godfather. We're gonna have the, we'll have the central round. Right. Tell, tell us about what this is. So go around the table. How you man. doing? My name's Will Porter. I'm from East Harlem. I'm a hip hop artist, poet. All right, Will. Okay. And All right. I'm Russ Haywood. I plays in the movie as Jamaican Russ. Jamaican Russ. And <laughs> that's it. All right. That's enough, brother. That's enough. I'm Lee Burns. Mm -hmm. I star in the movie. Okay. And you also, well, you help produce this? You help produce this, right? Yes. All right. Now, what else are you, brother? Uh, executive producer of Help Me Records. Okay. All right. Um, um, yes, yeah. Go ahead, brother. Kevin Stewart, um, mm -hmm. director of the movie, mm -hmm. um, producer, writer with Malik Barnes, and CEO of Team Hellgate Records. Okay. Yeah. Now, the first thing, what... How how did you get into this? How did you get into the whole uh, movie making? Oh business? well, um, I, me and Russell been in the film business over ten years. We had the number one hip hop underground video show on Eminem. It was called the Fat Cat and Big Stew Show. Okay, and um, that's where Russell was the director, and at that time, and I was the host with my part partner Fat Cat, and we played a lot of, you know, we was known for breaking Harlem artists like Cameron. We mm -hmm. broke a lot of videos on television back then. Uh, we was we when nobody was supporting Harlem artists, we was, and mm -hmm. um, so that's what we was known for, and we um, did some of the. We did a lot of the interviews that you see now in the Fed magazine. We were mm -hmm. doing it on public access first, and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. magazines kind of stole that idea. But, you know, that's where we started out on television. And then me and Malik Burns uh, produced, um, he directed and produced, and I kind of uh, got with him and promoted um, Somebody's Gotta Die. Mm -hmm. That was our first that's film. First. That's, mm -hmm. That was on YouTube. Okay. And um, Don Diva magazine gave us, we was the number one urban okay. film. Okay. Of that month for that time period, so we've been doing this for a okay. while. Okay, so y'all straight from the concrete, no whole no concrete, no, <laughs> no Hollywood, not Hollywood, Hollywood. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, so, 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 tell us a little bit about you know, without giving too much away, tell us a little bit about this uh, about the storyline. Well, you know, when a lot of times when people hear about Harlem, they hear Lenox Avenue, Eighth Avenue. They don't really hear about the other side of Fifth Avenue, which is East Harlem. So we felt we needed to tell our story, you know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of times, you know, there's, there's a bunch of projects just back to back on East Harlem, if you know East Harlem. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of things going over there. So we felt we wanted to show people a story. Because every time you see a story about Harlem, they show you the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. They show you the Apollo. Mm -hmm. They show you everything but the other side. So mm -hmm. we felt that the world needed to see mm -hmm. there's a whole other side. And there's a lot different across Fifth Avenue, going across Park Avenue, Lexington Avenue, Second Avenue, and that nature. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... All right. Having said that, there's a lot of Latino influence over there. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so is that in the in the film as yeah, well? Yeah, in the film. It's Talk a melting pot that. over there. Yeah. At this point now, it's more than just Latinos. There's mm. Mexican. There's yeah. there's a lot of Jewish. There's mm. a lot of Chinese. Mm. Just Chinese people in the project mm. now, okay. like regular now. So mm. you know, yeah. So you know, it's, it's a melting pot now. Mm. So that's a lot in the movie because mm -hmm. a lot of us now over there, it's not we get along with each other. You know, it's it's like. But, you know, it took a long time to be like that. You know what yeah. I mean? But now... Well, tell like, us a little bit about that. Tell us a little bit before they... 
folks were able to come together. What was it like? And who had turf and whatever? Well, you know, the, the gang, the, the project thing got really big. You know what I mean? Like every project, that's a gang. In New York City, especially on East Harlem, it's not like the Bloods and the Crips because, you know, in the project, you could live on 13C and be a Blood, and the Crip could live on 13B. So it's more or less about your project where you got to come back home from. So projects was fighting each other a lot. And I don't know if you remember, like, maybe two years ago, they did a big drug bust and busted a lot of kids over there. They mm. took over, like, 200 kids from East Harlem mm. that was gang-related. Mm. So, you know, the project... They did the same thing with Grant. Yeah, they did the same mm. thing with Grant in Manhattanville. Mm. But when they did it on the East Side, they did it with all, a couple of more projects here because um, we was, they did it first on the East Side. Then they went to Grant over there. Mm. And like I said, it's just it's the, it's the case of where this project was fighting against this project mm. and it just... You know, it all started over a small thing and just turned to a big thing. And so we just wanted to get the, the story mm -hmm. across and try to show some positive light on it, too, at the same mm -hmm. time, you know. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, all of us got together. Like, when this movie is all the projects are together, that's why we call it Hellgate. Mm -hmm. Hellgate is when you look at a Hunter Street train station, mm -hmm. that's the Hellgate train station. Mm -hmm. So then when we all come together, when every project come together, we form Hellgate. So we got together and felt that all of us can get together, do a book, do a do a movie, and show the kids that we can we can tell our story mm -hmm. and tell the grit of our story, mm -hmm. but at the same time do it by doing something positive by making a movie and you know and at the same time we was hoping to help our careers at the same time with the movie using it as a movie and a book using it as a tool to help the rap artists get more exposure you know to the world and you know we, we it, it, it was used as a tool to do a lot of things to tell our story. To, to, to get us out there in a major way and also to bring our music and our sound of East Harlem because we got our own sound of music mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we wanted our sound to come out so the movie was the the, the, the plate to serve the whole dish okay since yeah I'm you know, sorry man sure the kids you could take nothing to make a whole lot of something pull the, uh, your uh Microphone close. Show the kids you could, you know, you could take nothing to make a whole lot of something. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean? Uh, took fresh a that three hundred dollar camera and mm -hmm. made about eighty grand. <laughs> wow. That's nothing in okay. a whole lot of sudden. All right, all right. So go say that again because I want that to sink into the listening audience how resilient we are. Took a three hundred dollar camera Resourceful. Uh -huh. and made eighty grand. Uh -huh. How did you make the eighty grand? Uh -huh. Well we sold the film the red box. We shopped it and it's on Redbox now and it's not actually now they bootlegging it like you know, we came out we came out we came out with poltergeist, we came out with the spy. When you looked at us, we the only independent film with all the big major box office films. How did you get that deal? Um, just just kids I was just on the internet just being persistent. Hanging down everybody's doors, grinding, grinding <laughs> getting on their nerves, making phone calls and phone calls. And then finally, what happened was we put it on YouTube. It got 100,000 views, mm. like in a couple of weeks. And then an agent came to me. And, and then um, you look to your left, you see we got mm. almost a half a million views over there yeah. from the first right. movie. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. And so, that was somebody got to die. So, you know, mm. we already yeah. built a fan base and, 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 and the agent was like, when he first came to us, I was ducking him because I thought, you know, so many people that be BSing in this right. game. Mm. So we was very overprotective. But then somebody else said, no, he's the real dude. You need to talk to him. And when we got with him, and next thing you know, like two, three weeks, we had a red box deal. Mm -hmm. You so. know what? I have to say something, but I hope you don't take offense to it. Mm -hmm. Your story reminds me of the group from Money and Violence. I don't mm, know. No, I'm not saying Actually, offense. We love them. It's our stuff. Well, yeah, because I mean, that came out first, well, and, they, and that was a spinoff of everything. Wow, that's crazy! But you know what I think is like we all new filmmakers. Yeah. You know, right. I love Money and Violence because yeah. they right. telling their story of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We're telling our story of East Harlem, mm -hmm. and we new filmmakers. Like okay. we're the new, we the new generation. It's so okay. empowering right. and it's so refreshing to like see filmmakers like yourselves who are really telling a real story. Exactly. You didn't go get a whole bunch of fake people and painted them black and then uh -huh. said, okay, be a uh -huh. black person exactly. and tell a story. Mm -hmm. This is your story. <laughs> exactly. so you are telling it authentic. Of course, you're going to pull people. You'll see people who may fit some of your roles. I, I'm guessing that's how you get some of your actors, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like... Yeah, we got we got a lot of guerrilla style. Yeah, you know? <laughs> that, that's Actually, what we call. Talk about <laughs> whole, uh huh? Talk. I want to hear the brother back here. Yeah. Uh, talk about how you got involved. How you get involved with with filmmaking and and uh, yeah. how did I first get involved with filmmaking? Like he said, he said that we was doing a show on an internet channel, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Mm. Um, I started out. I took up some courses in Manhattan Neighborhood Network and um, okay. Bronx Net and okay. 
um, Queens Community College. I took up So you had courses. a knack for it. Yeah, you just pursued and, it. Yeah, yeah and mm. I was always their cameraman. Right. I was the one that always ran around oh. with their camera and mm-hmm. everything like that mm-hmm. and directed them. Mm-hmm. And then, so you the eye behind yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like when we right. first came in the room, I had to tell them, yo, make sure your phones is all, spit yeah, the gum yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started <laughs> out like no, that and it just went to something bigger. And it just went to something bigger. Yeah, that's that that's great. That's great. Now, talk about the central figure. Who is the central character? Mr. Mo Money over yeah. here. Or and who is that? Um, You're Brown. the central character. Yeah. And what what's Mo Money like? What's what's it all about? Basically, the struggle uh-huh. of just living in Harlem. Okay. Period. Okay. You know, like I have two disabled twins. Oh wow. And okay. in the story. You know, it's an emotional thing. Like, yeah. In the in this story, is like I had to gather up all this money mm-hmm. to pay for operations and do all this other stuff. Yeah, yes, it's real, real life. It's real life. Real life. Real life. Real life. Wow. But wow. some of the things that I have to do, of it's not always. You know, you yeah. can't just go yeah. and ask somebody for hundred grand or hundred fifty grand. You got to get it, however mm. you can get it, mm. or they will die. Mm. So it's just that deep, mm. you know, and that. And you know, when you watch the movie, you'll see them and you'll see how deformed they are and you know. And they're in the movie. And they're they're in the movie. Yeah, they're in yes, the movie. they are. They're in the movie. That's how and, this movie and is. And a lot of people had criticized me, like, Yo, why would you put them in the movie? Why not? Mm-hmm. It's why can't they have it? You know, they yeah. they they lifespan is, you know, they yeah. only last till what, 13, 14, 18. Okay. You know, kind of proud of that. Right. right. You know, so right. you know, that's their legacy. You know, right. I let them, you know. All right. Yeah, that that is that is that is interesting. Uh, those of the, those of you that are out there in the listening audience, and you're listening, uh, you can call in two one two six five zero six nine zero three. And uh, one more time, two one two six five zero six nine zero three. And uh, we want to talk to the um, to the creators of the East Side Story uh, a movie, written taken from the book by Anthony Canones. And uh, man, you all are doing oh, yeah, it. I'm getting ready to throw you out this room. Wow. <laughs> what? Just take this one. Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, what? What? What's, it, what's you he saying? You oh, said you weren't going to. No, no. Oh. You said you weren't going to say nothing. I lied. I can't no, you lied. You put this like. This you lied. Guys, like, you expect me not to say anything. I'm like, biting my tongue. No, well. Kind of no, I can't be quiet. No, no. Margin. It's great. This is her thing. Because she's, she's, she's an artsy person. But see, the, the yeah. beauty of you guys is like, first of all, you take the story that's really your story. And like you said, all of the projects, we kind of were fighting each other. And that's a that's a negative thing. You know, mm-hmm. like all of the fighting, all of the violence and mm-hmm. everything. And mm-hmm. what you did was you took it and you turned it into something positive. Right. positive. Right. And it's your own thing. So okay. I really want you to speak yeah. to our audience and let them know that yeah. this is something that they can do sure. because yes, the beauty of definitely. y'all is that y'all are so human you know yeah. what i mean i don't exactly. feel like i'm yeah. speaking to a robot or somebody Good, who has, real their, people. has mm-hmm. their bio and they're yeah, like okay i have people. to get yeah, yeah, a yeah, bunch yeah. of radio well, shows yeah, image yeah, yeah this yeah, is not people. what it is this is no. this is real people like even your and story this, and shopping it and this is something people. tell me something tell me this uh, as far as inspiration, did you get any, uh, like, okay, so you look back and you see folks like, uh, you talk about Bill Dukes, and we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, Spike Lee and other folks, did you get any type of encouragement uh, from any of them? I got my encouragement from Medea. Mm. Medea? <laughs> yes, Medea. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. Uh, Tell me about that. I said, I, you know, when I was sitting in the room, I was like, hey, how am I going to make some cash? Mm. I was watching him there. And I realized he did these VCR tapes and he used the auditorium. Yeah. And he used his people around him. Mm-hmm. And he sold those tapes. And I remember my parents and them watching them tapes. Mm-hmm. And they were selling like, how could it was like $25? I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. So, hmm, then we could do the same thing. Wait, that so, was around that long? Medea? Medea, yeah. yeah. Medea. You said on tape. Tape, VCR, VCR tape. Yeah. They were like so 25. He was not, doing the chicken circuit. He was doing the chitlin circuit. Yeah. Yeah. Churches. And I noticed everybody was doing something on YouTube, but nobody was doing the web series. Nobody was doing anything, really. I was like, man, if I could take this camera and use the real people mm-hmm. instead of hiring somebody to act like the real people. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
we can wow. really make an impact. Everybody thought it was crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. For, wow. for me, it was more or less like, you know, growing up, mm. my moms was always show me like, like the the old films like Superfly yeah. and um, okay. Dolomite and yeah. Mac and <laughs> so called you know, black exploitation. Black exploitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I, I used to be in like Sweet Back, you know, okay. and I used to be like so intrigued with how they did it, you know. And then yeah. I seen I, was, I used across to across 110th Street. And that yeah. was the main film yeah. right there. I was getting yeah. ready to get there because yeah, yeah, yeah. we I live on it. I'm from okay. 110th Street. Okay. Okay. So when I seen that film. It felt like what up, baby boy. It yeah. felt like it felt like we definitely had to, you know, we had yeah. to do it, you yeah. know. Yeah. So that was yeah. that was for me. A lot of the yeah. old films, I liked yeah. it the way they did it. Mm -hmm. And you know, you would see the cameraman in the background. Running. Yeah, you see the microphone. <laughs> the sometimes. microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so I thought that was us. I yeah. used to look at us like guerrilla style, you know. Yeah. And, and that's another, that's and another twist to it. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to do. Bang, bang, shoot them up. Right. Yeah. It's a lot of comedy yeah. in what I do. Right, okay. You know, I want to make the people laugh. Not yeah. Sit Different around and frown at yeah. the TV or, 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 or yeah. get the wrong impression and go and hurt somebody. Different types of nuances. Different mm -hmm. flavors. Different flavors. Well, that's good. This brother's been sitting very